and welcome once again to the Grand House. It has been a bit of a long time since we have last chatted. Uh, eight months, supposedly, to be exact, according to what I saw on my feed the other day. Anyway, tonight we look at a rather interesting classic that I just happened upon, really. I wasn't even going to really review this, to be honest. I was actually going to review a movie called The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Ward? Something like that. I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's The Age is Silent. Anyway, also known as a movie known as uh, Blade of the Ripper. Um, but I decided to put that to the side for now because I found another film called Daughters of Darkness. And this is a very good vampire film, kind of in the tradition of something you'd expect Anne Rice to have written. In terms of the story, it's a couple that ends up on their honeymoon in Europe. I think it was supposed to be like in Brussels, some of the some of the area. Uh, they end up basically meeting up with this countess known as Elizabeth Bathory. And for those of you that know of her story. She was the countess that had bathed in the blood of many virgins to keep her youth. She has a assistant in the film named Aliana, or Ileana, and the assistant is basically a vampire too, and she started out as a mortal, but then became, you know, acquainted with Elizabeth, and therefore became a vampire and really couldn't die, and she kind of wanted to die in some points of the film. Anyway, they meet up with this couple. The couple is... Mm, the husband in the film is... Eh, he's... He's easily led, I guess would be one way of putting it. And, um, of course, there's the... Um, what do you call it? The proverbial, for lack of a better word, the proverbial blonde bombshell in the movie. Actually, there's two of them if you count. De Delphine Zirig, I think is her last name. And I'm probably sadly butchering that name. Apologies. But uh, she's known for uh, being an international film star. Basically. Very, like, um, I'd say probably very early, you know, 50s and 60s and 70s, of course, film star. She was pretty big in that era. So basically, uh, the other bombshell, of course, is... Um, oh, damn it, hold on a moment. Danielle Omri. Uh, another good actress, really. Um, basically, she is going to be the next one to be seduced by Countess Elizabeth Bathory. And basically, it's her and her husband are in this large hotel-looking type of area. And there's a lot of murders that are going on at the same time. And at one point, they even happen upon a body on the street, the couple. And so what happens from there is, uh, soon after that, they meet the Countess, and they meet Oliana. And from there on, it's basically, uh, they're basically drawn into this basic seduction slash, mm, pretty much slow death coming type of thing. And overall, the film itself is really good in terms of atmosphere, in terms of, uh, well, the musical score is quite good, the cinematography is fantastic, and this came out in 1971, and uh, I guess it 
was one of those movies that appealed to both the art house and the grindhouse crowds. So it's definitely a very good, uh, that's definitely what I call a cult classic. In terms of uh, vampirism, eh, it's, like I said, it's kind of something you'd expect to see or read in like an Anne Rice type of book. Um, it's basically that, and it's basically, I would say, hmm, it's, eh, I guess softcore would be one way to put it. But it doesn't really emphasize on anything really sexual as much as some eroticism more than sex. Roger Ebert even liked it, which I'm a little surprised because I wouldn't expect Roger Ebert back in the day to be one of those types to really like horror films all that much because him and Siskel were one of the types, uh, two of the types of movie reviewers that were basically very, hmm, Republican over the movies. Uh, they were pretty much like the, oh, think of the children types and I really, mm, ugh, I, I can't stomach those, to be in all honesty. They get rather, yeah, just hard to deal with. Very just kind of self-serving, in my opinion. But in any event, I thought the movie was very good. It's out on Blu-ray and DVD, I think. Probably DVD might be your best bet. I'm not sure if it's out on Blu-ray or not, but it's out on a uh, label called Blue Underground. And it's a very good film. It's definitely a very good addition to the vampire genre. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm hoping to be doing another review next week, if possible. I found out that I had actually done the third Lucio Fulci movie before, but I'm probably going to revamp that. It was under another title called Zombie Hell House. The real title is House by the Cemetery. It's the unofficial zombie trilogy that Lucio Fulci did. So, I'm hoping to do that soon. If not that, I'm really hoping to do one of my favorite, hard to find, barely ever watched type of movies before. A little revenge film called Thriller. A cruel picture. I'm hoping to find, hoping to review that one soon. But until then, I thank you if any of you are subscribed to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you hopefully in the near future. Until then, fairly well.